All right, thank you so much for staying with Citizen TV. The hashtag is Newsnight at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. We'd like to hear your views on the BBI. Remember, it's an open discussion. No one is right, no one is wrong. Just state your views. Watch any makasiriko, right? Great. So let's start this conversation. Joining me now is Honorable Dr. Emos Kimunya, KPP Member of Parliament and Leader of Majority in the National Assembly. Thank you so much for making time for us. Asante. So the NC party leader, Musalia Mudavadi, wants the formation of another smaller committee mm -hmm. to look at the contentious issues that are in the current BBI report. Is okay. this a possibility? And then what will happen after that small committee? Then somebody else will ask for another smaller committee. And another smaller committee, okay? And there'll be committee after committee after committee. Remember, this process has been going on for the last two years. November last year, a report was presented. Yeah. And the same requests were made. Can we extend the term of the steering committee to go back to the people and have them validate the report to ensure that it captured what they had given? Mm -hmm. So they went back. They've held you know, from my reading of the report, they've held at least 93 meetings at KICC, yeah. validation meetings. They've gone round, yeah, in the regions. They've had public uh, gatherings. They received memoranda from people, emails, written, okay? And all that has yeah. then been synthesized into this final report. They've also indicated yeah that they could not uh, uh, bring onto this report everything the people said. It had to be captured within the framework yeah. of the nine thematic areas, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, for the last, between November and now, everyone knew yeah. that the committee was meeting. If people did not send their memoranda then, uh, but because we've gone to Bomas, yeah. and a few people have written in social media, there's something missing, there's something missing. So all of a sudden, yeah. there's now an interest to reopen the debate. But are you then saying that this is cast in stone? There's the, no changing this report now? Um, I'm not a final decision maker. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think you said that nobody is right, nobody is wrong. Mm -hmm. But in my own opinion, we must make a decision at some point. At what point do we stop amending and amending and amending, yeah. right? Yeah. And have to get to the people of Kenya to tell them, this is what you said yeah. for the last two years. Remember that the steering committee is not writing its own document. Mm -hmm. It's capturing the views of the Kenyan people. For how long are we going to keep the people of Kenya crying, saying they won't change? They want to see some things before the next election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mama Pendo and her family, they don't want to see another child dying yeah. at the next election. And all we are thinking of is committee after committee. The next election is coming. It's two years away. Yeah. Right? If we continue with committee after committee, yeah? You know, in management, they say, you know, uh, that a camel mm. is a horse that was designed by a committee. Yeah, because <laughs> they could never agree yeah. on, on the shape. Yeah? Yeah. And the, the moment you keep opening up uh, all, all these issues, you will never get to a point yeah. where a decision has to be made. But then what is the point uh, of asking Kenyans to read if it's not going to be changed? The whole point of Kenyans to, uh, being told to read is so that come decision time, they will make a decision based on uh, what they have read yeah. and understood. Not to read and start commenting again. Because that's what we were told to do with the first draft in November. So you're saying it's too late People to have forgotten amendments now. That when it was launched in November, yeah. they were told go and read and give your views. Yeah. Now those who read, yeah, actually gave their views. Those who did not read are reading now. Okay. And even most of the people giving their views, when you read, when you listen to the comment, they've actually not read. Yeah. Because if they have actually read, they will find the issues they are talking of or contradicting. How did it contain? Do you think there are any report? contentious issues in this BBI report? Uh, I would not see anything contentious within the report that I would say would be detrimental for Kenya. Okay. okay. So I, I've looked through it. Yeah. From, you know, uh, the 14 mm -hmm. laws that are proposed 
and those will go through a process in Parliament anyway. Okay. Then there is the draft bill on the issues to be contained within the Constitution. There is a little one or two, you know, some drafting issues that will be cleaned up at the, at the drafting. Okay. You know, like reference to a cabinet sector when we've said we're moving from to cabinet minister. There may be one or two referencing issues. Okay. But those are clean up issues. But in terms of fundamental issues contained within this report, mm -hmm. it's so clearly written, so simply written. We are amending article this because of ABCD. Okay. And if you read at this alongside with the current constitution, you can see the enhancements they are making. Yeah? So what do you think expanding the executive is going to achieve? Uh, are we expanding the executive? Yes, we have How? the prime minister, the deputy prime minister. Are you sure we are expanding? Are they, no, they are not currently there right now. They are not there. What do you call that? But there's a leader of majority who is being removed. That would be you now. Yes. So let me, let me play something the deputy <laughs> president no, said before. No, put it this way. Let, let me just tell yeah. you. Let me show you. Yeah. Before you say expanding, mm -hmm. Kenyans have said they want cabinet ministers to be in parliament, mm -hmm. right? They also want a president and deputy president outside parliament, okay? So, you have ministers now inside parliament, okay? Now, who coordinates those ministers in parliament? Is the job currently being done by the leader of majority? Mm -hmm. And previously, used to be by the vice president as leader of government business. Now, because the vice president is outside, yeah. right? So, you then have to get one of the ministers to coordinate the others as the prime minister, mm -hmm. right? You know, that's the nomenclature uh, for all the jurisdiction that you start. Yeah. So we are actually not creating a position because we are picking one of the members of parliament, making him the prime minister with two deputies. Saturday is being by parliament. There may be a few allowances here and there, right? But we're not creating position. But you actually need a position to coordinate to work in parliament, okay? And if you start looking at it from that point, that it's a necessity created yeah. by the ministers coming from within parliament. They need a coordinator. And on the other side, the leader of minority goes and you have the leader of the official position, yeah. as we had before, with a shadow cabinet. Mm -hmm. So you then have the checks and balances okay. within parliament. First of all, party to party, and then backbench and front bench. Mm -hmm. yeah? I mean, you can't get it any better. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me bring up something the deputy president said earlier on and hear your views on it. Let's play it. The question I'm asking myself, have we sorted out the winner to call question? Yeah. Oh, is that so? Yeah. So, the president from his side, like for example here, President Uhuru Kenyatta, I am here, Kimunya is the prime minister uh, because he's the leader of majority. We have Jimmy Angwenyi, who is our deputy as a, a, a deputy prime minister, and maybe Maoka Maore as one of the deputies. So what happens to the whole NASA brigade together with Musalia and all these other people? Mm. Okay. Yeah. So how does that foster inclusivity? It's, it's, not, it's not just about inclusivity. I think we are talking of because the question of inclusivity is what much wider than power sharing. Mm -hmm. yeah? It's how do you bring in the disabled, how do you bring in the children, how do you bring in the women, the girl, child, the marginalized communities. Yeah. That's the, where the inclusivity is. But does the deputy is. president have a point? But in terms of what is that, how he's talking about, how do you solve the issue of well, the winner, winner takes it take all. It all. Yeah. Now, the winner, in this case would be Jubilee, if we are to repeat these elections as they were. Yeah. So Jubilee takes the responsibility of forming government, because mm -hmm. they've won. They've been given that responsibility by the people. Then the NASA coalition becomes the official opposition. Mm -hmm. And they then constitute a shadow cabinet. So for every docket within the ruling uh, coalition, you have a matching uh, shadow uh, docket. Okay? And that's what happened. That's standard in the Westminster uh, situation. Yeah. And between these two, that's why you then have the checks and balances. So every time, for example, Jubilee presents a certain policy paper, or even the budget, there will be a shadow response, you know, in terms of, yes, you have said you, you're doing the four, uh, the big four agenda, right? Then NASA would be saying, this is 
nonsense. If it was us, we would concentrate on this, right? So even at the point of the negotiations for the budgeting and fund funding, it will be reflected based on policy for policy. And the NASA Brigade would feel they are playing an integral part in, in government. Yeah. Not when everyone is now like submerged and then, and you end up with a situation where it's like, what's our role? Mm -hmm. If we are all one national assembly, right? Checking on the government, yeah. uh, jointly with, it doesn't matter who is in the ruling party, who is, who is the majority and who is in the minority, yeah? You, you actually lose out on what happens there to the loser, especially when mm -hmm. that presidential candidate is then told to go back and wait for the next election. Yeah. Never mind that he had almost 50% of the people. And their people say, well, we queued, we voted for you. Mm. Yeah? So the, how you cure the winner takes it all is that the people who lose become the opposition, which they still are even now. Not exactly. They're actually not an opposition. Mm. Because you actually don't have an opposition in parliament. <laughs> because of the handshake. Not even because of the handshake. Because of the way the 2010 const uh, constitution was, uh, was, was constructed, yeah? You actually end up with, uh, you know, parliament is assumed to be yeah. one unit checking on the executive, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's something we rushed into yeah. without quite thinking about it. Eh? But if you compare what we have now with what we had before 2013 mm -hmm. or before we adopted the 2010, yeah. you will see a total difference. Yeah? Okay. It was very clear, those sitting to the right of the speaker is a government side. Yeah. The other side is the opposition. And even the debate within the parliament yeah. will be on, the government says this, the opposition says that. So Chesire Kevin on Twitter is asking, the creation of the office of the prime minister and DPM comes with a budget for the offices. How affordable is this? What's the sustainability given the current economic plight facing the country? We, are, we already have uh, the office of the leader of majority. Okay? So it's simply renaming it. It's renaming it. We have 22 ministers yeah. or cabinet secretaries we are now outside, in addition to what we have in power. Are you sure that it wouldn't come with packs to it, even if you rename the office like yourself? In fact, the DP said you would be the prime minister in yes, this Yes, and, and I'm very happy yeah, that, so then, uh, that I've already been appointed. There would be no <laughs> any packs that come with that? No. The, 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 there has to be the, a financial implication. Let's put it this. Every office would have uh, the enabling staff, the enabling infrastructure. Yeah. We've gone this route before. It, it, it never became an issue that is too expensive. Okay. Remember, we're also having 22 cabinet secretaries who are currently outside parliament and who will be appointed from within parliament. Yeah, okay? There's no double salary. Mm -hmm. So you have savings on one end, you have the other. But the most important thing we must look at, why are Kenyans agitating for a return of that? Because it's Kenyans asking for it. Yeah. Yeah? It's because they have realized they, are not, they don't have the, the touch with the cabinet secretaries. President Uhuru is doing a lot, mm. right? But when you go out there, what do, what do you hear? You know, you, you just hear the, uh, uh, more the haters yeah. than the lovers, huh? because there's that disconnect between what the government is doing yeah. and the people, right? Uh, because the guys are very good. They're mm. busy working in the offices, but there's a political cell in terms of what is happening. Which is missing. So how do you explain then that the president of the office of the ombudsman who will then take check the judiciary? I think considering the first, the the first thing we need to powers. ask ourselves, is there an office right now of the ombudsman? But it is not directly appointed, it doesn't directly but we check. We have an office. The judiciary, yes. We have an office. Yes. Uh, and that task is currently being done by the uh, office, office of the Deputy Chief Justice, right? Now, why are people asking for that office to be removed from that and made independent is because people are complaining to the same people who they are complaining about, right? Okay? So you feel there's conflict of interest? There's right? conflict of interest, and it's the people themselves who are demanding, who are saying, we have an office of the ombudsman. Yeah. So when people feel their cases have been delayed in court and they want to complain to somebody, they're told to report to the office of the DCJ, right? And they go there, and say, now, how do I complain to the same person mm. who has appointed a judge or majesty to hear my case? So they want an independent ombudsman, right? Which is exactly the same thing happening with the executive and everyone else. Now, once you decide you need an independent person to be appointed, can you then go to the chief justice to say, can you appoint another one and house him outside your office so one inch you can have confidence? 
They are demanding because they, they have failed mm. to get justice, right? And now you then look at how do we appoint other independent offices? Yeah. You get the president to nominate and we will create the enabling legislation, we will create which panel will appoint the person, how they'll be done or you know, appointed and all selected. The president will nominate, bring the name to parliament. Parliament will then vet, call for public participation and then approve. Mm. And when the person is approved, the president just does the formal appointment on behalf of the people, right? Now, how does that erode the independence of the judiciary? Yeah. How different is that appointment or the nomination process, the appointment process of the ombudsman? How different is it from the appointment of the chief justice themselves yeah. and the deputy, right? Does that erode their, their independence? So, it actually enhances the yeah. confidence that people will have in the judiciary. As That's it stands, yeah. is there a Jubilee Party position on this document that you will be then tasked to make sure that the members stay within that line? Well, I believe uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is the party leader for the Jubilee. But are you allowing party. dissenting voices? That's the question. No, when, when the party leader speaks, right? He expects everyone within the party to toe the line, right? And if you are having any objection, you should object internally, not out there, right? So I'm expecting that any people, any members of Jubilee who have a different position from the party leader, right? Who has, you saw the emotion he had yesterday yeah. in terms of saying, I cannot wait to see another uh, blood of another child being shed because of an election. Yeah, I want to leave a united country. I want to sort out the youth issues. Now, we, all of us being members of Jubilee, right? Owe our allegiance to our party and our party leader. And if he tells us to move in a certain direction, we move in that direction. If we feel that he's moving us in the wrong direction, we are free to decamp and go to another party. And I think that's, that's how parties operate. Is that what you'll be enforcing? That anybody who has a divergent view then should We would want ship? to encourage as many people as possible to, uh, to, 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 to see yeah. the wisdom of what the president is saying. And if they don't? If they don't, then they are at liberty to move to another party that shares their vision. Okay? But this is supposed that's to be the building thing. bridges. It's supposed to be uniting the people. All views are supposed to be welcome. In fact, that's what you've been preaching. Building bridges does not necessarily mean uh, constantly fighting so that you have more bridges to, to build. Yeah? It means people seeing a common issue. Now, who would not see the need for national unity? Who would not see the need for avoiding violence at elections, right? Who will not see the bigger picture in terms of we want to help the youth, right? Once you, 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 you look at the bigger picture instead yeah. of the, the, the party, instead of 2022 politics, instead of you know, uh, individual issues, yeah. anyone looking at the bigger vision will want to associate with the BBI. Okay. Right? Yeah. Now, in terms of whether the BBI has what you thought it should contain or not, right? Those, those are dif dif different issues. But we must agree that has BBI achieved to the extent possible, yeah, the task that the steering committee was given. Now, and I believe that uh, looking at it, I believe they have. And we must thank them. Because yeah. it's, it's quite a, an onerous task. Uh, collecting all those views of different people and trying to make sense of them, yeah. it, it's not easy. Yeah? So this and there will be, never be a time yeah. when everyone will say, my views have been incorporated as I wanted. So when political parties have a say in a uh, selection of IEBC officials, yeah. how fair is that? Well, it was introduced in the 1997 IPPG reforms, remember? Yeah. The question is how fair is it? No, because when the players are, decide who the referee is? Because they are the main players. The members of the EPL could all decide, yeah, they don't, uh, FIFA, they, they have a say in terms of FIFA, right? The, own, who, the people who are elected in FIFA, the players have a say, right? In some way. <laughs> they don't just sit back and say, let a body come and manage for our soccer. They have a say, <laughs> right? And, and it's the same thing even with these elect elections. Yeah. We have in this country a culture of not trusting, okay? 
So if we sit, or if the president, as head of state, uh, sat down and picked seven people and said, I've appointed the seven as the commissioners yeah. to run the next election, okay? Or even to run the elections of 2017, 2027, when he will not be a candidate, right? Or even 2022, he's not a candidate, okay. yeah? How many people will trust, yeah? They'll say, no, we want to see uh, who is from our region. We want to see who represent our party, yeah? Okay. The churches want to see who represents the church, yeah? So now, in this case, the people of Kenya told the commission that uh, we, they would want to go back to uh, the situation where the political parties uh, would appoint four out of the seven, mm -hmm. right? Now, in relative to their strengths. So if you have four big parties, each will appoint one. If you have two big parties, each will appoint two. So both sides of the combatants okay. are represented. All right. So it can't get any fairer. <laughs> okay, so let's leave alone yeah. the details about the BBI because yeah. Kenyans will read and decide yeah, for exactly. themselves. Yeah. Now let's talk about the way forward. So this is neither parliamentary nor a popular initiative. What should Kenyans expect from here? I think the first thing that Kenyans expect, those who not receive copies will receive copies. Okay. And then they will read. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we would encourage as many people as possible to read and understand. Yeah. So even as they are having their discussions at home, they are discussing by looking at our interest was this. Have they been captured well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, of all these issues here, is there anything that can be bad for us? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if it's bad, I would also want to hear somebody pointing out that this thing is dangerous. If it's dangerous for Trevor, it will be dangerous for me. Okay. okay. And then I would also, then we can have a discussion. How do we avoid this danger for ourselves or even for our children? But if something is good, we all agree it's good, let's move forward. So read, read, read. The next thing is obviously the principles will uh, be guiding the way forward. And uh, there will be a series of meetings um, to discuss further in terms of how do we take it to the people, how do we engage. Yeah. But the ultimate is to have the Kenyan people uh, own the changes through a referendum. What timelines are you looking at? Now, all factors held constant. We have COVID-19. We have COVID-19. Yes. We have uh, uh, we, we, the ultimate is the referendum. Okay. Okay. We have verifications or ratifications and, and approvals at the counties, because I, I believe the route we will be taking is a popular initiative. Okay. For 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 not for reasons of avoiding parliament. I would have loved we do it in parliament. Yeah. But the time when you look at the timelines and the approvals you have and the thresholds you need and the people you leave behind, yeah? Because if we do it in Parliament, we still have to take it to a referendum. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go through the popular initiative, we can, you know, walk and chew gum at the same time. In terms of, by the time we are taking it to the counties, there will be lots of debate at the county level. There will be public participation at each of the counties. So when are you starting the collection of signatures then? Uh, Immediately, the, the, the paperwork, I think, is, is all done because, mm -hmm. and, and the, 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 the logistics are put in place. That should start. And it, it should be possible because there's, there's, there's broad support yeah. of, of, of this initiative across the entire country. So the challenges of signatures should not be there. Then we now need to get to the IBC to verify those signatures. And then after that, it's uh, get, get, go ahead to take it to counties. And you know the IBC is not fully constituted, so... By then, it will be constituted. How? Because we've already done the law okay. for the amendments to the IBC Act. Yeah, it was cleared in the National Assembly. It was cleared in the Senate. I expect the signing of it yeah. anytime now. So when you say anytime by then, time. what timelines are we looking at? I'm it, just trying to draw the roadmap for Kenya so that they know this is the point no, where we, the I don't want to, to tell them. I don't want to tell them the referendum that wait for point. the signature time yeah. on this. Let that come formally from the two principles. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, because they'll give us that and the other ones to announce the people. But generally, the, all the consultations we've had in, with the different players have all said, don't uh, deny the people of Kenya their participation in this historic moment, mm -hmm. right? So that as, as the, the, it uh, gets uh, uh, voted on uh, within the counties, um, and they are very excited, obviously, because of the word fad with the county assembly funds and, yeah. and the 35%. Uh, 
as they get that, uh, then it comes to the National Assembly and the Senate to just confirm what the, the counties have done. Then we take it now to the referendum. So that timeline yeah. will, is dependent on so many factors. You know, how long IBC takes, how long this collection takes and all that. And there, there's a, there'll be some teams mm -hmm. that will be working on that, okay? But in the meantime, we've done the IBC law. We have done our referendum uh, bill, yeah, before we, we go home in December, you know, so that by the time we go for the referendum, there's a law to facilitate that. We we'll also have looked for so that will financing. be done before the end of the year. The end of the year. Okay. It's 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 it's, a, it's just a waiting second reading, mm -hmm. uh, and then we finalize with it, then give, share it with the Senate, and they finalize with it, and we have it signed. Okay. And there should be no contention on that. It's, there are some things that are you either do it like this or like that. Yeah. Okay. It's not like, yeah, something to, it's not like the formula where yeah. people be fighting for resources. Okay. Yeah. So are you saying now this evening that there's no way this is changing in any way, shape or form? This is it? I, I'm not, well, if, um, I'm not saying it's not changing or not. The principles will have to decide on that. But uh, the moment you start changing, yeah, even the change you make today because, for example, yeah. Uh, the Honorable Musalem Davadi brings an amendment. So you say, we like it, we change. The Honorable Kalonzo Musioka looks at it and said, I don't like what he brought. So I'd like to bring a counter, okay? Then I also look at it and said, I don't like what they have said. So you could have change of a change of a change, yeah? And that's what I'm saying. The, the people are told, this is the opportunity you have. Now go to a KICC, go to send your email, mm -hmm and give their views, let them be validated across with all the others. Because there's nothing you'll do that does not affect what somebody else has also done. And remember what these guys have said? Yeah. They've only captured what has received, yeah. you know, the broadest consensus. Okay. So there are so many issues Trevor may have sent. Yeah. But because we only sent with you, yeah, rather than five of us here, so ours were dropped. Okay. Now you're trying to force them, yeah, because we're dropped because we are not popular, mm. right? And if we open that route, we will be there forever. So finally on this issue- Yet we have only yeah. less than two years. When is this vote for a referendum most likely to be? I would, I would put it probably just before June. Next year? Yes. Okay, before because, June next year. Yes, because right. if you're going now past August, you're eating into just one year into the next election. Okay. Remember, after the referendum, it creates some positions. For example, the Senate, the lady members moving into the Senate, okay? Which is, which is a great issue. <laughs> I don't even know why people are not celebrating, because eh? we are giving 35% uh, of the resources mm. to the counties. You need greater accountability. You need greater oversight, yeah? So you need a stronger Senate with not 47. Does strength mean numbers or legislation yes, partly that empowers numbers, them? partly numbers. If you have one man and one woman, there are some issues that the women senators who focus on because they touch the lives of women and want to see how the funds that have been allocated have been used to better the lives of women. There are things that the men will be looking at, yeah? Now, sending a, a men senator or yeah. a female senator to just look at all the issues on cross-cutting, they are likely to look at things from their prism, yeah? Okay. So, but having the both gender represented to oversee uh, those huge resources that are going there is a plus for this country. It's a plus for devolution, yeah? Anyway, but we would, the, those people who want to buy as uh, senators will need to make a decision, yeah? Okay. And campaign for it. So you need to give them time. Okay. So we, we, we build August of next year, it will be cutting it too thin. Okay, so it has yeah. to be before June It will be best by June, yeah. so then we will uh, clear up any legislation uh, within between July, August. Mm. And also, we can be able to uh, prepare the financing of the new structures. Okay. Yeah. Let me bring up some feedback before I take your closing mm. remark on this issue of the process. Engineer Lazaro is saying, BBI documents should be made everywhere from digital platform to daily newspapers. Kenyans should be given sufficient time to read it with a language they can understand well. All right. 
Let's see what else you're saying. It's D. Ochieng says, how is the creation of a shadow cabinet official opposition sort out winner take it all if the opposition rejects the election results? Nobody will reject. Wow, well, sure you that they will not. No, there's a whole spirit of, you know, people who accept. Yeah? And you see, once you, have, once you have the credibility uh, of, of, of the IABC yeah. and the electoral process eh? and the reduction in these suspicions, people accept the results. Okay. Yeah. Sir Jim Kitch is asking the same question. How is this BBI stopping electoral discontent and chaos? I need them. They need to read. And they will see. It's all there. <laughs> Duku Wakibobo says, ask on Kimunya, why don't we have a referendum alongside 2022 elections to save funds? Uh, then how do we implement the recommendations of the, you know, the changes that we need uh, on the elections? Okay. Yeah? In 20, without, we can't do the election in the morning and then go back and tell people now we have created, the referendum yeah. has passed. Yeah. Can you now go back in the afternoon to elect female senators? Yeah. Mogire, <laughs> Mogire Ernest says, Mr. Kimunya seems to suggest that the document is cast in stone for now. A process that disregards dissenting views cannot claim to foster the alleged national unity. I mean, the national unity has been done over the last two But years. there are still dissenting views. Let me also tell you, Trevor, tell me anywhere in the world, yeah, where there's been 100% concur concurrence on anything. So there always be a dissenting views. But what you look at, do the majority of Kenyans want to move in a certain direction, Okay. right? And, and I think that is, the 2010 constitution was voted by what? 67%. 67%. 33% dissented. Yeah? But we still believe we have a good constitution. Okay. So okay. even this referendum, if we get 80% and only 20% oppose, yeah, we will still have moved. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Bran Okoth says a shadow docket can be ignored simply by its being shadow. No mandate, absolutely. Winner take it all is strengthened and made even more formidable. I think people are confusing a government of national unity with, you know, the, the you know, ruling party and uh, uh, op former opposition, shadow mm -hmm. cabinet. Eh? And they just need to look at what is happening in UK. Yeah? What's happening in most of the Commonwealth democracies. And you understand how it operates. Okay. And they, have, they are very quite, quite strong. Yeah. All right. That's where we have to leave it for now. Honorable Dr. Amos Kimunya, thank you so much for making time. Member of Parliament Kipipiri and the leader of majority of the party, National Assembly, says by June 2021, that should be the, around the time when the referendum will be. This still comes back to you at the end of it all. Read the document, decide for yourselves. All right, that's where we leave it for now. My name is Trevor Mbija. Always a pleasure having you with us. See you again tomorrow on Daybreak, right? Still about the BBI. We'd like to hear your views as well. Good night. Good.